You may not know this, but I, I did some of the early research on anesthetic drugs with brain imaging, trying to answer the question, what part of the brain is the last to turn off when someone loses consciousness? Mm. And is that the first part of the brain to turn on when consciousness is regained? And I was working with an anesthesiologist named Mike Alkire, who was really brilliant at this. These were really the first studies of, of brain imaging uh, using positron emission tomography long before uh, fMRI. And uh, you would inject a radioactive sugar that labeled the brain. And the harder the brain was working, the more sugar it would take up. And then you could make a picture of glucose use in the brain. And we, he, he was amazing. He managed to do this in normal volunteers. He brought in and anesthetized as if they were going into surgery. Uh, and he managed all the human subjects requirements on this research. And, uh, it was, he was brilliant at this. And, it, and what we did is we had, uh, these normal volunteers come in on three occasions. Mm -hmm. On one occasion, he gave them enough anesthetic drug. So they were a little drowsy. And on another occasion, they came in and he fully anesthetized them. <laughs> and, you know, he would say, uh, you know, uh, Mike, can you, can you hear me? And the person would say, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, you know. And then so we would scan people under the, and under uh, a, a no anesthetic condition. So same person. And um, we were looking to see if we could see the part of the brain turn off. Yeah. He subsequently tried to do this with fMRI, which has a faster time resolution. And you could do it in real time as the person went under and then wow. regained consciousness, where you wow. couldn't do that with PET. You had to have That's three different occasions. And the results were absolutely fascinating. We did this with different anesthetic drugs. And different drugs impacted different parts of the brain. So we were naturally looking for the common Mm -hmm. one and it seemed to have something to do with the thalamus and consciousness this was actual data on consciousness <laughs> real con actual consciousness what part of the brain turns on uh what part of the brain turns off it's and not so clear <laughs> it's not but maybe has something to do with the thalamus the the, the sequence of events seem to have the thalamus in it boy um now here's the question are some people more conscious than others? Are there individual differences in consciousness? And I don't mean it in the um, psychedelic sense. I don't mean it in the political consciousness sense. I just mean it in everyday life. Do some people go through everyday life more conscious than others? And are those the people we might actually label more intelligent? So th now, the other thing I was looking for is whether the parts of the brain we were seeing in the anesthesia studies were the same parts of the brain we were seeing in the intelligence studies. Now, this is, you know, this was very complicated, expensive research. We didn't really have funding to do this. We were trying to do it on the fly. I'm not sure anybody has pursued this. You know, I, I, I'm retired now. Uh, he's gone on to other things. Uh, but it's, I think it's an area of research that, that would be fascinating to see the parts there are a lot more imaging studies now of consciousness. I'm just not up on them. You know? So, but basically, the question is which imaging, so newer imaging studies, to see in high resolution, spatial and temporal way, which part of the brain lights up uh, when you're doing intelligence tasks, and which parts of the brain lights up when you're doing consciousness tasks, and see the interplay between them. Yeah. And try to infer. I mean, that's the challenge of neuroscience without understanding deeply, looking from the outside, try to infer something about uh, how the whole thing works. Well, imagine this. Here's a simple question. Does it take more anesthetic drug to put, to, to have a person lose conscious, consciousness if their IQ is 140 than a person with an IQ of 70? That's an interesting way to study it. Yeah, now, I mean, if there is, if there is a, a yet, if the answer to that is is a, 
Stable, yes, that's very interesting. So I tried to find out. Mm -hmm. And I went to some anesthesiology textbooks about how you you dose. Mm -hmm. And they dose by weight. (laughs) And what I also learned, this is a little, little bit off subject, anesthesiologists are never sure if you how deep you are. <laughs> yeah. And they usually tell by poking you with a needle, and if you don't jump, they tell the surgeon to go ahead. I'm not sure that's literally true, but it's... Well, it might be very difficult to know precisely how deep you are. It has to do with the same kind of measurements that you are doing with the consciousness. With the, it's, 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 difficult. it's difficult to know. So I don't lose my train of thought. I couldn't find in the textbooks anything about dosing by yes. intelligence. I asked my friend, the anesthesiologist, he said, no, he did, doesn't know. I said, can we do a chart review and look at people using their, their years of education as a proxy for IQ? Because if someone's gone to graduate school, that tells you something. You can make some inference as opposed to someone who didn't graduate high school. You know, can, can we do a chart review and he says, no, they, they never really put down the, the exact dose. And the, no, he said, no. So yeah. to, the, to this day, that the, 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 the simple question, does it take more anesthetic drug to put someone under if they have a high IQ or less or mm-hmm. less? It could go either way. Yeah. Because by the way, our early PET scan studies of intelligence found the unexpected result of an inverse correlation between glucose metabolic rate and intelligence. It wasn't how much a brain area lit up. How much it lit up was negatively correlated to how well they did on the test, which led to the brain efficiency hypothesis, which is still being studied today. And uh, there's more and more evidence that the efficiency of brain information processing is more related to intelligence than, than, uh, than just more activity. Yeah, and it would be interesting, again, this is the total hypothesis, how much in the relationship between intelligence and consciousness, it's not obvious that those two, if there's correlation, they, would be, uh, cor- they, they could be inversely correlated. Wouldn't that be funny? If you, um, the um, the consciousness factor, the C factor plus the G factor equals one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice trade off. You get you get you get a trade off. How deeply you experience the world versus how deeply you're able to uh, reason through the world. What a great hypothesis! <laughs> Certainly, somebody listening to this can yeah. do this study. <laughs>